Hey guys, it's Misty Eyes and Ayana Chanel. And we are here with a Get Made Up with Misty. Um, this is Ayana. She has been in Florida for over five years. Over five years. And she has been like one of my stepchildren, one of my adopted daughters who I've taken under my wing and helped <laughs> grow and evolve. And <laughs> she's definitely performed in my show for many years. <laughs> many and years. And, um, yeah, she's actually, we talk about it in the video, but she's actually getting ready to move away. Yeah. So I snatched her up. I said, hey, before you go, let's do a little recording. Let's do some recording. Definitely. Um, she's from Oklahoma, and she's moving back to Oklahoma, where I actually went to college. But we didn't know each other then. You were probably much younger. What were you doing in, in the 94 to 98? 94, 98. I was born in 89, so I was in elementary. So we definitely were not friends. I was in college and you were in elementary school. <laughs> cruising the elementary schools looking for future drag children. Not a good idea. <laughs> not a good look. Don't try it. Not fun. But anyways, I think that you're going to enjoy this video. Yeah. Uh, lots of things happened and we were running very, very, very late. Um, so the end of the video, you'll notice um, I had to escape Iona and finish getting ready myself so that we can hit the club because we have to be there at a certain time but um so i had to she's the only one i've ever bailed on while she was putting on eyelashes and stuff but um she's actually still not completely ready she's going to finish at the club but we'll take a picture at the club when we're ready so that we can like put it in the video <laughs> definitely but anyways keep i don't watching. have a lot to do just kind of add a little few things in there but we're done yeah but anyways yeah. keep watching you'll love it so tonight is tranny granny it's national grandparents day um, how are you going to do your makeup? Well, I'm going to do something very, um... Artistic? Artistic, and then I'm going to change it into a granny, like, very, like, old age makeup. Mmm. So. How are you going to change it into it? Do some old age lines, you know, want to learn back in theater, you know. In theatrus? Yeah. What's that? Back in acting, you know, classes. My first makeup class was also in theater, and that's where they em emphasized underpainting, which I rarely do, because um, I find if I underpaint, I still have to overpaint. Like, I do it sometimes if I'm going for a more subtle look, but I always end up putting the dark shadows on top My of My acting teacher back in college was, was, was really, really hard. Why? Really? He was very, very strict. strict. It was impossible to get a perfect grade in his class. Oh. Yeah, there's no such thing as a perfect score. Yeah. Yeah, I've had teachers like that, too. And, like, I hate to have bad grades. Uh -huh. Like, I strive to do the best that I can. So you learned how to suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Although they did not appreciate, I, they didn't. They ended up. I ended up like gaining, not gaining. I mean, uh, whenever you lose, I lost his trust. I lost his trust, and I lost a, a big part in a, in a musical production because How'd I was, you lose I, was young, trust? I was young and stupid, and I was in love. And with him? No, oh. with with one of my exes. I decided to go after the man that I loved instead of. Focus on the you were not responsible. I was not being responsible. Yeah, I was too caught up in love. I was young and naive, and we were doing Roger Hammerstein's Cinderella, mm -hmm. and I got cast as the Herald, and which was a big part. And you basically didn't come to rehearsals. I did come to rehearsal, but I made up a whole huge lie why I couldn't come to rehearsal when I didn't come to, to Tech Week. I think it was. Uh -huh. And he took you off the roll. He took me off. Yeah. Actually, he told me, he had me come in, said I had a special rehearsal for me today, and he had my understudy go up on stage. And you watched and your understudy? watched my understudy perform, and he said, that's the one taking your part. He's like, enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> that's evil. The shake. But, lesson learned, you know, whatever. Um, it wasn't you... worth it. But that's a life lesson you surely learn for the rest of your life. Yeah. Do you think that that's, so that's a good thing? Yeah. I remember one time, I've never been a morning person my whole life, ever. And 
one of my uh, college professors, um, I can't remember the class, but I remember the guy's name, Mr. Lewandowski. I can't remember if it was a business class or a communications class or what, but fucking A, dude, I was always late to this class, always. Sometimes I would sleep through it. And I would come to meet him, but give him all these excuses. Some of them were true. Some of them were not true. Some of them were just like, oh, maybe he'll believe this. And then finally, like after the fifth or sixth or seventh time, of, oh, my alarm didn't go off or whatever I would say. Um, he finally was like, look, you're late and you're responsible for your actions. I do not need to hear stupid excuses of why you were late. You were late. When you come to my office, you need to say, I'm sorry, I was absent, and this is what I'm gonna do about it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't need to know all this crap that's going on in your real life. See, I made up all this big excuse and lies, and he dug into it and found out the real truth, and I didn't get away with it. Well, he's like, I don't care. Like, you failed. You made a mistake. Now, you have to live with the consequences. I don't think I failed the class. But I did learn that people don't care about your bullshit responses. They don't. You were late. You were absent. You failed to live up to your responsibility as an adult. And therefore, it doesn't matter why. You have a younger audience, right? What? You have a young audience, right? A young audience? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, moral of the story, be responsible. Yeah. A man or a woman is responsible for her word. And if you say you're going to be somewhere at a certain time, be there. Because yeah. yeah. you will pay eventually. Uh -huh. And I'm thankful to teachers like that. That taught us important life lessons. So, I don't know. I'm kind of confused about how to paint today. Because uh, I wanted to do like lots of glitter and stuff. But, um... Well, ladies don't wear glitter. Well, I'm doing like gothy kind of like makeup, and then I'm gonna be like a because I'm gonna be when, I, a when I'm lady. old, I'm gonna still be myself, you know. And that's what we say, and then we get all these, we make all these life decisions. <laughs> and like, oh God, <laughs> why? I'm still gonna be crazy and wild, regardless. So, you know. I remember I got my first tattoo, and so I was like, "Are you gonna be 65 with that tattoo?" And I was like, "I'm not gonna be 65. Like, I'm totally gonna die young." <laughs> So, speaking of college in Oklahoma, you're moving back home. Yes, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Well, no, no. Well, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i excited, but it's sad that I'm leaving. What brought you to Florida in the first place? Um, my best friend, we went, went to school together in Oklahoma mm -hmm. at ECU, and we lived together in Oklahoma City for two years. And then um, we... Uh, she got a job here in, in, Fort Lauderdale, in Fort Lauderdale. She moved here December 2010, and then I moved May, December 2011. A year after her? Yeah, a year after her. Well, not really. It was like months, because it was, it was December 2012, and then May. Is she still here? Yeah, she's still here. So what makes you, what is making you move back home, unfortunately? Um, just with everything happened with my sister. Um, what happened with your sister? You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Well... Uh, it was unfortunately Memorial Day. Um, I was talking with my younger sister at the moment. I was getting a text from her, and we were talking back and forth, and we were just joking around, and we were just messing each other. Mm -hmm. And she saw pictures online about me um, recently when I had my. I used to wear the fake nose piercing, mm -hmm. and my little sister was like, "Did you get your nose pierced?" And I said, "No." I, I, I said, "I said, well, maybe." I said, "Maybe." And then she was like, maybe I did. And then she was like, no, tell me. She was like, did you get your nose pierced? And I said, maybe, maybe I didn't. She's like, mom wants to know. <laughs> and I said, I said, mm. I was like, eh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I was just messing around with her. Uh -huh. And then she was like, she's like, well, she's like, Amber wants to know. And then about that time, I didn't hear nothing back from them. So I didn't think nothing about it. I was like, well, maybe she, she didn't just stop responding. Right. So I didn't think to message anybody back. So then she, um, I get a call, I get a message from my uh, from my uh, mom telling me to pray for my sister sister that they're well, they didn't her, respond yeah they're rushing her to the emergency room. emergency room um, and about that time I didn't know what was going on nobody was really telling me anything they just said they were rushing on the emergency room they didn't know what was going on they just said that she they had to call the ambulance and um, um, 
they said that she had a high blood pressure and they had a, she had a fever and they had to rush to the hospital and they ran some tests mm -hmm. and they found out that she had a brain aneurysm so they had to rush her to Oklahoma City to the OU Medical there and she was there for almost two months almost two months in the, mm. in the ICU in the neuro department so what's happening with her now? Is she? Um, she's back at home now. She's in recovery. Um, she's just recovering and just staying at home. And she's just. Uh, um, her orders are just to stay, just to um, take it easy and no stress and um, just to take it easy, basically, until she's ordered to go back to work. I'm oh, sorry. Um, Who's gonna order her to go back to work? Well, I mean, like the doctor, she wants to go back to work. Oh, because I mean, you know, she's been at home for quite a while. She's been off of work for almost three months. What does she do? Um, she works with uh, the Chickasaw Nation. She does. Um, she does travel enrollment for like the um, the CDIB cards and stuff. Are you talking like I know what these are? What's well, the CDIB card? <laughs> Like the blood quantums for the to show how much Indian you are and stuff, mm. like enrollment for your tribes. And do you ever get people that are like, Let me check my levels, and they're like zero Indian? <laughs> yeah, I want to check. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of people like that. I want to check. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. My mother's bloodline is from Iowa. Well, like, I mean, like, they don't have, like, they don't have, like, actual, like, databases where, like, people, like, they, you have to have some kind of, like, they just don't have that information available. You so you can't have, say, like, oh, your no, blood is half, no. Because I know they could do blood DNA and they could tell you, oh, you're from, you have Irish in you or you have whatever. Well, with that, yeah, but I mean, like, they don't have that stuff, no. So how do they prove it if they don't have that stuff? Um... I don't know. I have to have my sister on that. <laughs> Call her, <laughs> but not until she heals. So your fake piercing gave your sister an aneurysm. <laughs> no, but so when I went to the hospital, funny story about that. When I went to the hospital, um, I flew in that next day. Yeah. Um, my parents wouldn't tell me much, right. and then I flew in the next day. Um, I got there, I actually flew in that day, and then I got there that, that early that morning of that day, the next day. Mm -hmm. And um, they told me Keep to paying. go in there. They told me to go in there and tell me um, to, if I go in there not to, because she was in a induced coma. Mm -hmm. They told me not to... Uh, talk to her? They told me I could talk to her, but not to be upset, because she, she's, not she's aware. Respond. She's aware. Oh. Like, she's aware, and she can, she can hear... But she won't be able to respond. Yeah. So they. So they be strong be, for her. Yeah, be strong for her, basically. So then, um, I was talking to her, and I said, "I said Bubba's here," and then because I, Girl, she, calls Bubba. she calls you Bubba. She calls you Bubba. You is country. She Bubba. And then, um, I said, and and just so you know, I was like, I don't have my nose pierced, and she had the biggest smile on her face. Uh. But. Because you that. finished the conversation. Yeah. It was it was very hard to see her in that state. Of course. Well, when I was in right up, okay, I got kicked out of college in '98, and I couldn't go home, so I stayed in Tulsa for a minute, and I went to beauty school. And I wasn't talking to my mom and dad because obviously they kicked me out of the house, they kicked me out of everything. But um, one of my sisters had a brain aneurysm as well, mm -hmm. but hers was right. Or uh, not an aneurysm, a tumor, a brain tumor, and it, hers was right here, between her eyes and the front of her scalp. And they, when they operate, they can't go through the bone mm -hmm. here, so they had to go through the bone in the back. Mm -hmm. And they're like, they called my mom and dad, and because um, she was on a missions trip in California, mm -hmm. they called my mom and dad out, and they're like, um, she's going to die. You need to come make her death arrangements or whatever. Okay. I'm like, we're still gonna operate because there's a small chance she could live, but there's like a 90% chance she's not gonna live. But we believe in miracles at this hospital and we're gonna pray for her and we're gonna do our best. And you need to pray for her and but also be realistic 
that mm -hmm. there's not really much of a chance for her to survive. So, long story short, she has had a severe recovery. Um, when she went home, she had no short-term memory. Oh, wow. Like, mom would say, go to the mailbox, put the, ma the red flag up, get the mail, come back into the house, but leave the door open. And my sister was like, okay. So she'd go out there to the mailbox and just stare at it. And she'd look at the mailbox and be like, I know I'm supposed to do something here. So then she'd look in the mailbox and be like, oh. and then she'd forget everything else. Mm -hmm. But she can't remember that we lived on a farm when we were little. We lived on a farm then too, but like when we were little, we had a pig farm. So she's like, I remember the farrowing house and I remember, you know, blah, 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 like weird details of our childhood, but she couldn't remember today or yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I remember it was real hard on my family, but now she's married with kids and like living a normal life, yeah, right. but they wouldn't take her back in college because, um, her math skills were minimal. Like, she was in college on a college missions trip when it happened. But oh, they were wow. like, um, yeah, you don't have the basic knowledge to be a college student. And they wouldn't take her back. So she was kicked out of school, too, basically. That's stupid. Yeah. Well, I'm glad she's, she did, I'm glad she made it. Because, yeah. I mean, we were, very, we, were, we were very worried about my sister, too, because they, they, were, they were preparing us for the worst, too. They were telling us what could happen because mm -hmm. she had so many surgeries, too. Um, because, and, and plus, on top of that, you know, she had many, um, complications too during the time that she was there. Um, she had tons of, um, what's the word? Um, spasms? Um, contractions? Yeah, something like that. Um, which are mini strokes. Mm -hmm. And which that can cause serious damage. So they were, you know, preparing us for, you know, complications with that too. But, She's doing good. Um, when I was last down, um, she was having a couple problems with some things, but overall, she's doing good. Oh, good. So, but so you're going back to take care of her? Yeah, and just to be there with her, and just every, so when I was down there, just I was, I was in my heart. I, I was just being led to be down there. You know, I just something was telling me that I need to be down there with her. You know, so and just I don't know. Everything just feels right okay you know everything's working out. well girl you're moving back to the bumfuck egypt oklahoma <laughs> are you sure that feels right <laughs> it's not even oklahoma city or tulsa it's like um podunk it's like as big as boca coral springs like suburbs it's like you know they have chilies they have applebee's mm. they have shopping centers they don't have a mall but you know we have a walmart how far are you from tulsa I would say about two and a half to three hours. How are you from Oklahoma City? Uh, hour and a half to two. So you're closer to Oklahoma City. Yeah. So you're in the middle of Oklahoma. Yeah. I would. I would rather. I. I would normally would travel to Oklahoma City more than Tulsa. Mm -hmm. If I want to go somewhere, more than likely. So you would go to like Angles and Tracks and all that. Angles is not really open anymore. They usually just do it for pageants. Huh. Mm -hmm. Our special parties. Shows so how much I know. I haven't been in Oklahoma in 16 years. Wait, yeah, I moved in, I moved New Year's, or New Year's, that makes no sense. I moved here for Y2K. Oh. So literally over 16 years, going on 17. So you said your husband's gonna move with you. Oh, there it is, what now? You said your husband's moving with you. Yeah. Not right away, but he is. So what? How's that going to work out? Is he staying with? You? Are you moving in with your mom to take care of your sister? Or what's going on? Yeah, I'm moving back in with my family. Uh huh. And I'm gonna work from home. What are you doing? Uh, same job. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he's gonna come when? Uh, whenever I I set him up with uh, a thing online in my hometown with my uh, with our with Chicks Nation. With the Chickasaw Nation, I'm sorry, I talk fast. I'm, it's all right. Um, they, they 
offer a lot of jobs for um, people in our area, in that area around Ada, because mm-hmm. they run the majority of the town. So um, I set him up with online there, and so I'm just waiting for him to upload his resume. Um, so I'm hoping that it won't be too long. So, mm. is he gonna fly? Are you guys flying or driving or what? I'm flying. He's gonna he's gonna drive though. Has he been there to visit already? Yeah. Okay, so he knows everybody. Yeah, he knows everybody. Because that's real scary. Yeah, he knows everybody. I'm moving to somewhere far, far away. No, he knows everyone. With my in-laws. No, he knows everyone. He's, he's met my family. He's met my sister, all of them. Mm-hmm. Well, good. Well, good. So you've lived in Florida for five years? Over five years. And what was your favorite part about Tulsa? I mean, what was your favorite part about Fort Lauderdale? Favorite part? Yeah. Um, Did you love it here? Do I would say just the people I've met. Yeah, you made good connections? Yeah, good connections. My first two years here, I hated Fort Lauderdale. Because I'm actually from Tulsa, and the people here are very different. Fort Lauderdale is a very transient state. Yeah. A lot of people move here, and a lot of people move away. Like, it's... it's oh, you're already... You're already... I'm half done. <laughs> yeah, you're just starting. You're talking and not painting. All right. So I'm trying to slow down. But a lot of people move here, and they move away. <laughs> so, um, my first two years... Or, so the people are very... I would say reserved or protective. Yeah. Like they don't want to get to know you right away. Yeah. Because you're probably going to move anyway. Yeah. Um, so they're not very warming. Not very warming, no. In the beginning. No. Um, unless they want to have sex with you. And then it's a different kind of warming. And it's a expiration date warming. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like they just want to get in your pants and then it's gone. Yeah. So Pretty much like if you're... Uh, um, if you've never been to Fort Lauderdale and you're new to the area, just be prepared to sleep with, like, if you sleep with someone, you prob- you're probably sleeping with, like, the whole, <laughs> like, everyone in... You don't think Oklahoma's like that? Not... They're not... Not as, not as bad as, as well to... Not, not, not as bad as, like, Girl, Fort Lauderdale, Well, I lived though. in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and there were definite night... Okay. Y- you... How do I say this? I was a hoe, and you're not even on camera. Well, like, I mean, I didn't... There were nights when I was young, and I would go out, and it was like, every night I'm going to hook up with somebody. <laughs> like, that was the gig. Like, and then, back then, the club in Tulsa was concessions. So we'd all go to dance, concessions and dance, and then when the night was over, we'd go and stand outside in the parking lot and, like, talk to people, like, where's the after party, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And because back then there wasn't a grinder. Mm-hmm. Now you could be a hoe and not anybody else know. Mm-hmm. But they're, back then they're like, oh, Dakota's getting in this car. Misty, well, I wasn't Misty back then, but Misty's getting in that guy's car. Oh, she's going home. You did him three weeks ago. You know, it was very scandalous. By the way, best primer ever. What? Poor professional. Poor professional from GBS? No, um, Benefit. It's from oh. Sephora, or you can get it at Ulta. Well, are you like her? Um, because it just blurs your pores, and it doesn't... Closes them. But yeah, Oklahoma... Girl, I think all gay people are just hoes. True, Um, true. (laughs) It don't matter what city you're in. I used to be a hoe. You don't know my nickname? My nickname in college in East Central. Because I was a sheltered kid, um, (laughs) back in Oklahoma, and my parents didn't let me do nothing. Like, literally... School, home, church, home. Yeah, that was my family. Friends' house, home. Nothing. Like, and they had to be approved friends. Like, my mom had another right. parents, everything. Um, and it had to be down the road. It couldn't be, like, in, in town or nothing. Um, so when I went to college, I experienced, you know, I got the whole... Freedom. Freedom. So then, when I went to college... I became the fence hopper. What's that mean? That's what they called me. <laughs> the fence hopper? What's that mean? Like, you know, a fence. Like, a fence. Is it like a walk of shame? Like, no. Like, a fence. And then you, like, you hop. Like a fence hopper. 
So you became the bottom of the town. Wow, I ain't never heard that before. So you would like do everybody? Well, not like everyone, but you know. She's a hoe. Protection. She protection. A yes, always you always protection. have to respect yourself and protect yourself. Yes. Otherwise, you can get very sick. If not, it's just nasty and wrong. It's not nasty to fuck everyone <laughs> in town if you, if you respect yourself and protect yourself. But if you're a cum-guzzling whore, then, uh, <laughs> then you're nasty, apparently. Girl, there's something about, uh... What are you doing in your eye? I don't know. It feels like lint or dust or an eyelash. Then you're nasty. You're nasty. And you weren't nasty. What was your nickname in college? God, I don't think I had one. People didn't brand you? Well, I went to a Christian college, so... Oh, and I also had a girlfriend in college, and I had friends trying to out me, and that was very wrong of them. My theory is, if you confide in me that you are homosexual and you ask me to keep your secret and not tell anybody, I won't tell anybody. But if you're walking around as a closet homosexual, I'm talking about my theory back in the day. If you're walking around being a closet homo and trying to tell everyone you're straight, and I know differently, I tell differently. Like I remember one time there was a cheesecake factory waiter who started, and everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, do you think he's gay? Do you think?" I'm like, "Girl, he opens his mouth and a purse falls out. Like he is straight up woman." No, I don't lie like that. I don't lie like that. Um, but I'd be like, oh my god, she is a woman, don't worry, she's a flaming faggot, she's one of us, girl, don't worry, blah, blah, blah. And then, after two, three months of working, he comes up to me and confides in me, hey, I'm, I know I'm gay, but I'm afraid, I don't want anybody to know. And they'd be like, oh, okay. Then, I became like, people would be like, oh my god, the new guy, what do you think about him? I'm like, I don't know, he seems nice. And they're like, no, do you think, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, you always know. You have gaydar. I'm like, oh, I have no idea. Because I suddenly was an ally. Like, uh -huh. he wanted me to keep a secret, so I kept a secret. And tea. Exactly. But, girl, that's that would be some advice to the closet kids out there. Go up to the gay guys and be like, please. So, you're doing that new brush thing. I've had this for a while, though. Girl, I don't care how long you've had it. <laughs> Do you like it? Is the I question. love it. Yeah, it's fast too. Yeah. Mhm. Mm and it blends everything. It's better than your hands. Mhm. Mm it's better than a, everything else. Mhm. Mm it is fast. The way you put your foundation all over your face, it definitely worked fast. Mhm. Mm but they do brushes like this in every size. What do you mean? Like I've seen some huge ones, and I've seen some little tiny eyeshadow ones. Is it wobbly? It feels wobbly. Yeah. I've seen them all over Facebook and Instagram and all that. I love it, though. Yeah. And then I also... So you recommend it? Yeah. And, like, I don't recommend, like, getting... I mean, if I had the money, I would get, like, the... The, the real, real ones. The gold ones. Yeah, the real ones. But, let's be real, I ain't got that kind of money. <laughs> It'd be nice, but I ain't got that kind of money. Yeah, I don't got that kind of money either. I'm a starving artist, girl. <laughs> On the real. Right. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ooh. Did the wrong color. What'd you do? Basically, my whole <laughs> thing brown. Oh, well. But... I'll fix it, girl. I just... The Put the wrong color. Oh. I ain't no tea. I did a heart. <laughs> you, that's all right. She's sharing love with the world. I think I'm gonna go kind of, I don't know, maybe kind of natural. Yeah. Can I just turn the old age easy? I was thinking kind of like doing kind of a natural, kind of like grungy kind of look. I don't know, girl. 
You never know. You know, sometimes like I have an idea in my head, and then it doesn't, and then like it doesn't come out, and then, and then I just you kinda, start, <laughs> and then I start doing something different, you don't. and then it just comes out amazing. And I'm like, okay, I meant to do that, you know. Yeah, Sean's not gonna be able to transfer with this job. No, he's gonna yeah. come around. That's got to be scary. He's been there 15 years, 15, 16 years. Yeah, so he has experience. That's why I said um, that's why I said he would be a good asset for the Jigsaw Nation, I think, because they love someone's experience, you know, and, and they're known for their businesses and, and they're really good with their uh, with their companies. They have tons of different programs and stuff, so I don't think it'd be a problem. Good. Well, good. I'm happy for him. Yeah, it's always better to move with a job. So at least you have one. Yeah. Yeah, everything kind of worked out for me. So that's why I was like, it's, it's meant to be, you know? Well, John, my husband, when we went to Alaska, we went in fucking winter and he fell in love with it. So all my family's like, what, are you coming back? Are you coming back? Are you coming back? And he says, when we come back, we're not leaving. I go, what do you mean? He goes, we're moving. <laughs> I was like, we're never coming back. <laughs> I don't want to move to Alaska. But he wants to. And. And you don't want to, Misty? Uh-uh. Maybe one day. But I'm not trying to move back to the girl. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. But I ain't trying to go back right now. Uh-uh. Did you see that article about um, what's your what's your thoughts on uh, Kim Kardashian? Whenever they say, whenever they said, oh, Kim Kardashian was the was the startup of sandbagging. Did you see that? I don't even know what you're talking about. Like where they take powder and they put it, like they bake. You it. mean cooking? Yeah. I think Kim, I, first of all, I didn't see this article, but yes, Kim Kardashian has been painted by drag queens for years. Uh huh. The Kim K Kardashian's makeup techniques. The drag queens have been doing for centuries. But I do agree, Kim Kardashian made it mainstream. Yeah. Because people will be like, oh, I need banana powder. What the fuck? <laughs> Are you a drag queen now? You don't need no banana powder. Yeah. Well, Kim Kardashian used it. I'm like, Kim Kardashian is knows the importance of painting for the back row. You know what? What? I could really care less about the Kim Kardashians. So. I don't watch that show. I don't like I mean... I, I think don't mind beautiful. the Kardashians, but I mean, I could just care less about them because I am pro plastic surgery, and therefore I am pro that they got all their Brazilian butt lifts, and I'm pro all their body enhancements, and I'm pro their breast implants, and I'm pro their silicone lips, and I'm pro all that. Uh -huh. So I'm glad, and I'm glad that they look like trannies, and I'm glad that the world is obsessed with them. Yeah, I did a Misty Minute not too long ago, or I don't know if the Ask Misty Misty Minute, but it was an Ask Misty about the trend of biological women painting like trainees. I love it. So I'm all for the Kardashians. Go, That's go, go. That's a bio queen, right? No, bio queen is a female that does drag. Oh, you said trainees. Oh, my bad. I didn't understand that. I'm sorry. All right. I'm not mad about it. I hate my makeup already. Just go into your old age. Do old, do old numbers, girl. For the first show? <laughs> Gag them. Just do old numbers. Do, do, hop, do, um, do dance with somebody, Rishna. I'll make it work. But no, I, I think, I definitely think that, um, Kim Kardashian is one of the first people to go publicly on her Instagram and Twitter about highlight and shadow and cooking. Yeah. Um, but I think it's awesome that there are people out there that are proud. I remember one time in college, there was this girl named Benji. And, um, I remember I was like, oh my God, who's your dentist? I need to know who bleaches your teeth. And she's like, I use Rembrandt toothpaste. I was like, girl, your fucking teeth glow in the dark. That is not Rembrandt toothpaste. But just in case I got Rembrandt toothpaste and it didn't work like that. What? But my point is... I've been with people to the dentist who got bleached, or I've taken people to Dr. Richard to get Botoxed, uh -huh. and then they lie about it. They're embarrassed that they spent money on their Botox or silicone or whatever, and I'm like, girl, be proud of that. I think it's awesome that you're spending money on your 
maintenance. Own it. You own it, yeah. So, bitch, I've had work done. Whatever, get into it. I mean, you, but paid, I, you paid for it, so why not? Yeah. I think it, I'd be more embarrassed to be like, um, I was born this way. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm trying to be the very best me I could be, just like the Kardashians. And I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I'm glad that they do that. I'm glad that she's on there saying, that I'm not naturally this flawless. This is fucking makeup. Oh, and it's not just regular L'Oreal CoverGirl makeup. This is painted like a queen. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed. More power. Go you. So what were your thoughts when you first met me? You? Yeah. You're gonna ask me that on camera? Yeah. Why not? Um, I don't remember. I, you, I, I think when I first met you, you were coming to Chinese House and you were hanging out with Nicole Halloween. Right? Yeah. Um, I thought you were very insecure and very shy, um, but very sweet. I also felt like you had um, an air of Diamond Dunhill about you where you could not. You were with you were uncomfortable with silence. Mm, I kind of grew out of that though. Yeah, um, but I remember you were very uncomfortable in your skin, and you were uncomfortable in groups of people. Because mm -hmm. um, I remember it was very like, oh my god, I own a Chanel. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> um, but yeah, you did grow out of it. Um, I think you grew out of your insecurity too. Yeah. I've watched your makeup grow over the years. Um, I don't know. That's one of the best, the things I love about Chinese Pops. I've been doing it for 11 years now. And I love watching the girls grow. Mm -hmm. Like every week, some girls is like, wow, you're just getting better and better. Like, I really love that. You know, and I love taking girls like you under my wing. Obviously, you had a drag mother from Oklahoma, and I never was like, I want to be your drag mother. But I definitely treated you like one of my children. And I, I definitely mentored you and mm -hmm. helped you. Took pride in you. Gave you lots of unsolicited advice, <laughs> whether you wanted it or not. Um, and I usually don't do that to people I don't care about. Speaking of, can I show you something and you're gonna die? Yeah. I don't know if you'll get it, but I thought it was fine. Girl, <laughs> that is not safe for camera. I cannot show you what she was trying to show me. Um, I love that girl that sent you that message, by the way. Think and I'll love her. She's the one that kind of really got me out of my, my insecurity. But she's super shy too. But I'm glad that she helped you. And you helped me too. A lot of people kind of... Girl, I remember there was Steve R. Lang is a very good friend of mine. We worked together at Cheesecake Factory. And I remember he'd be like, oh my God, you're so fucking gay to me. <laughs> and I was like, so are you. He goes, no, nobody knows I'm gay. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. And he was very closeted-ish. Like, uh -huh. he, was, he was just got out of the Navy. Uh -huh. He was very masculine, very whatever. And I was like, oh my God, whatever. But I remember he was very bitter and angry that I could be so careless and carefree. Like, I did not give a shit if I was flaming at my table or not. They could tip me, they could not tip me. I don't give a fuck. Uh -huh. I'm going to be me, and that's that. And I remember he was like, how can you do that? Mm -hmm. I was like, because I don't care. That lady at my bill, if she tips me $2 or $5, is going to tip me whatever she wants to tip me. Like, I don't care. So throughout the years, Stephen has really, like one year he wrote me a really long thank you letter of like, thank you very much for helping me come into my true skin. Mm -hmm. Like, because he's completely changed from the person he was back in those days like he was living in fear and i don't think that that's necessary don't live in fear who yeah. cares that lady don't pay your bills yeah she gives you a dollar or two but that's not your bills i remember one time i was almost fired for being gay at cheesecake i never was but my manager was like oh my god because i laugh 
real I can't fake laugh it, but it's really high pitched and it's really loud. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time he's like, You can't laugh here anymore. <laughs> I was like, What? He's like, Don't laugh. And I'm like, so you're telling me you don't want your employees to be happy in the workplace? He goes, no, I'm just telling you that your laugh is too loud and it's too piercing and customers complain. And I was like, so you're telling me that I can't laugh when I'm at work? And I don't remember the words I said, but it was basically like, um, so you're trying to have a discrimination suit that you don't want. <laughs> you know, and he's like, no, 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 okay, fine. Just try to keep it quiet. That's funny. It was funny. But my laugh, my laugh is very like, I can't mean, it's like a cackle, like, ah, oh, yeah. like super squinny, basically. I laugh like a very loud woman. And it is very piercing. Like, it's, it embarrasses me sometimes. Like, if I'm in a cafeteria, like in the food court or something, and it just echoes throughout the whole place. Mm hmm. And everyone stops and looks to see who that creature feature is that's laughing. But I don't care, but I realize that everyone's looking now. So I get it. I know what he's talking about. But Steven was like, wow, I wish I was more like you. I was like, you can be like me. You can. You can. can. And he has. Oh, he was no. my roommate for many years. And uh, is now a flame bot himself. In different ways, of course. I'm actually a woman, and he's just a flaming homo. But he's finally become comfortable being himself. And for that, I'm very happy for him. So I think I'm going to take my little lashes off for my old lady number. Because I'm going to wear big ones for the first show. Oh, no. What? Well, maybe I can use this. Let me see. You know, I went to get that palette and it was gone. Really? Yeah, because you let me borrow it one time. Because I was doing my Dell and I forgot my it was chin gone? cleft. Yeah, mm -hmm. they sold out of it. Where did you get it? At GBS? Uh, no, I got it at uh, Ulta. When they oh. have, you need to get Ulta when they have it on sale. Usually, they have, it's all, sometimes they have, you gotta watch it, sometimes they have uh, their next on sale. When they have all their products, buy one, get one 50% off. Oh, wow. Um, I went to um, GBS for it, and they were just sold out of it. They said Gemma Stone was the last one to buy it, and she bought three or four of them. It's like you cut three or four. I know. Damn. Well, when I like I went with eyeshadow, so if I know I'm going to use it, I'll buy three or four. I don't buy in bulk because I've been in that situation and I don't appreciate it. That's just me. Well, if it wasn't Gemma Stone buying three or four, it could have been three or four people and they'd still be out. But still, I mean, I've been in that situation before and it, it just aggravates me. So I, I, I'm i just, I guess I'm just that kind of person. I think of other people. I mean, I teach their own, I guess, but I've been in a situation before and I'm not saying it's bad for you that you did it, but it's just my, my point of view. I'm not saying you're a bad, horrible person. You know what I'm saying. Not a bad, horrible person. So you're going to start over and be all new and different when you move? I think that's the best part about moving is rebranding yourself yeah. and reinventing. What are you going to do? Are you going to still do drag? Yeah, I'm still going to do drag. Probably not as much because I'll have to travel. You go to the city. Yeah. Oh, actually, there's one in McAllister, actually. That's really... Booming, and I have actually friends that actually say it's really good. Um, it's a McAllister, and it's called Fat Marys, and they actually have queens that they book from Oklahoma City that come down. So I'm gonna actually go there and kick in and see if I can get a booking every now and then. Get a booking every now and then over there, and actually the tips are pretty good there apparently. So guess we'll see. For years, I've called you Iona Chanel Trailer. Yeah. You should officially name yourself that when you move. <laughs> She's moving to Oklahoma and she is hashtag white trash. White trash. I think that would be perfect. I don't know. I just like, I just like branding that. I just like branding. And I think that would be a good brand for you. All right. Trailer trash chic. Cause you're always chic.
but there's always an air of, I don't know what I'm trying to think of, like struggling fish. Struggling? No, like, this is not Versace, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm kind of like, I'm a redneck woman, like in my high class heels, I just always get that feel with you. Like you said with your with your makeup brush, like this is not whatever the brand is, but it's just as good, and I love it. <laughs> I, I don't know, I just like that about you. I own a Chanel trailer, and then, like I do, they can just call you I own a trailer sometimes. True. I just love it for you. Like I always think that like you find your niche, and make it own it brand it Brandon. like not as trashy as alaska thunderfuck and she's my favorite rupaul's all-star contestant and actually probably my favorite rupaul girl in history uh -huh. but her whole gimmick is trash to treasure uh -huh. like she literally wears trash bags sometimes like i'm literally talking like that like kind of make that an element uh -huh. like i own a trailer and maybe make a trash bag dress every once in a while but I said that about you before I even knew her. So I'm not trying to copy Alaska for you. Yeah. I just think that would be like a good aesthetic for you. Now that you're moving back to Oklahoma, it fits right in. And I think the fans will really cherish and identify with that as well. Mm -hmm. Like, again, I care for you. I wouldn't try to. No, I... So sometimes I call you I own a trailer on the microphone and sometimes people are like, oh my God, you're so mean. I'm like, no, I'm not mean. I like her. But I'm trying to help her. I also thought you were trans when I first met you. Really? Or future trans. Well, I did paint really, really fishy when I was younger. Like when I first started. Yeah. Like you just had that air of femininity and gracefulness and I'm a woman. I don't, I don't know how to describe it other than that. <laughs> yeah. I'm a woman. You know, like there's some drag queens that are like, I am a gay man. And then there's some that are like, I'm fishy, you know, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. I'm a woman. What colors do we use? Miss, I'm not on the camera. I am too on the camera. No. <laughs> That's one thing I'm sensitive now because I did Amanda Austin's and she was off camera like this. Oh, was she really? Most of the video. I was, I'm like, I, oh. I'm like this, really. I'm like, girl, <laughs> get back in there. Let's see. Um, I, this I think you're rubbing off on me. I'm feeling gothy. Like, look how smoky my old lady eyeshadow <laughs> just got. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, oh, well. Pumpkin. So, who, of your friends back home, who's most excited about you coming back? Or does anybody know you're coming back? Are you, is this Lots of people are excited about me coming back. Yeah? Uh-huh. Um, lots of, like, um, there's multiple of my friends in uh, my hometown are excited. Um, they couldn't believe it. They were... Yeah? They were ecstatic. Ecstatic's a very serious word. They were, they were, they were pretty. Super happy about it. Super happy. What's the biggest thing you think you've learned? Self-confidence, we just talked about. Yeah. What else? Being humble. Florida taught you that? Yes. Self-confidence, humility, stage presence, is something you picked up along the way. Yes. Um... Keeping, um, what's the word? Um, composure, too. Explain. 
Um, I got booked for a gig. Mm-hmm. And... You mean people paid you to show up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, classy. I kind of got a little crazy. You, oh, you got drunk? Yeah. Yeah. And I learned the hard way. Why they fired you? No, I didn't get fired. Just, I got... Written up, kind of scolded? I didn't get to drink. I couldn't drink for quite a while. They cut you off? Yeah, cut me off for, like, months. Yeah, that's important. You, I mean, you have to realize your name is your brand. And a lot of queens have that very reputation. Like they drink themselves into a carpet. Like stumbling, falling off the stage drunk. And that's not good. No, nobody wants to hire a girl that's gonna, that they are pretty sure is gonna do that. Yeah. But like, I didn't realize it because they were, because like, I mean, really I could drink whatever I wanted and I didn't have no limit. And I was trying to be responsible and there was just this person that said, hey, let's take a shot. And I was just having a good time and I didn't realize it. And I just kept on taking a shot after shot. And the next thing I know, they said that I was basically okay. falling asleep at the table. While you were working. While I was working. That's not cute. It was definitely not not what I got paid for. No. And I can see them not trying to pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're free drinks. Yeah. I think that if every drink you drank was bought by a customer, they wouldn't be so harsh. Yeah. But if you're at the bar saying, I want another one, that's when they're like, uh, lady, calm down. So definitely, when you get a booking, just keep your composure. If you... Get booking like that because it's not cute. It's Thanks. okay to get messy every once yeah, in a while, but, but just be responsible. Yeah. Drink responsibly. And an Uber is much cheaper than a DUI. Yes. So ain't no need to drive home drunk. DUIs are on your record forever. Ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody. I will say my makeup has changed drastically. Yeah. <laughs> you were just fresh when you got here. Like my eye makeup. Like if look at my, like I'm, I don't do my eyes. Like drastically, my makeup has changed. That's good though. I think evolution is good. I was read by one of my fans the other day saying that my makeup's changed too much. Really? And I was like, um, it's, you should evolve. Like, I don't know why you're mad about it. Yeah. Like, that's a good thing. You should. I can't imagine somebody thinking evolution or evolving is bad. Never. Never, never. Ain't nobody. Let me close that. I have a Gucci lipstick. Oh, work. Gucci. When did you get that? I went to visit my friend Rebecca Glasscock at the Aventura Gucci store. Oh my goodness. And I wanted to buy something. Yeah. And it's actually very similar to the color that I like with um, MAC. And you. What's your biggest strength and what's your biggest weakness as a as an entertainer? My biggest strength? Uh -huh. Um hmm. I would say my weakness is pad pageants. Okay. I'm not very a big pageant queen. I've tried pageants and, and that's just not me.
Yeah. Um, my strengths, I would say, probably my I make up my different looks. Your creativity. My creativity, yeah. That's the word. Diversity. Diversity. Yeah. You're not stuck in a rut. Yeah. I mean, which don't get me wrong, I do get stuck in a rut, and then that's when I have to step back, and like that's when I have to, you know, walk away and go somewhere, or you know, go, you know, pop in some music or get inspired by something. You know, I can't just, mm -hmm. you know, inspiration don't just come to you. Know, you gotta go find it. That is true. I have often gotten writer's block with drag related things. Like makeup or costume design or wigs or it's like oh Ain't nobody got time for that. Why am I saying that so much? What do you use with this? This is something that I wanted to try for a long time. It's and I letter. said in several of my Get Made Up With Misty's that I want to try this. I just haven't been able to afford it or buy it or... So this is Skin Frost. Yes. And um, it's Jeffree Star. Yes. Do you like this? I love it. Um, this is Ice Cold is the Whitest. Do you use it with this? Yeah. And you didn't buy it, it was given to you? Yeah. It was a gift. Ooh. A little bit goes a long way, so if you don't want to shine bright like a diamond in the sky, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like a crystal gel. Oh wow! It looks so much <laughs> up there. Look, look up there, yeah. but in this mirror, it's not quite as yeah as whoa. Yeah. Um, it kind of gives you that mannequin. Yeah, that's what I like about it. Barbie feel. Mm -hmm. And then if you want like an extra shine, yeah. I put Miss Becca on top of it. What's that? Pearl. It's Becca Pearl. So it's a skin highlighter? Yes. And this one's amazing. On top of another highlighter. Yes. This one just gives that extra. So remember we were talking about Alaska Thunderfox? Oh. You're also from planet somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name's Alaska <laughs> and I'm from planet Graviton. And my name's Iona <laughs> Chanel Trailer and I am from planet I'm not human. Planet I'm not human. You know, growing up a very closeted and sheltered individual, I was always one. Um, I used to wish I was black. Then I wished I was a chola. Don't make me cut you. I'll put down this baby. All that shit, honey. I, I was just, I just was very unhappy in my skin. Speaking of, did you see that um, Mad TV is going to be on Hulu now? ABC. Oh, it's on Mad TV. It's yeah. on Hulu. I saw something about it. I and thought they I... did an episode with Bone Kui Kui. Is it coming back new? Yeah, it's coming or... back new. It's coming back new. Excited about it. Yeah. Well, I don't know how I feel about all this highlight. <laughs> I told you not to go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Whoa. I told you not to go crazy. You did not tell me not to go crazy. You said it goes a little bit goes a long way. <laughs> I just don't know how I feel about it. It's something I wanted to try. Kind of might have went a little overboard. I love it. I love the glow. Maybe I could blend some of it off. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I hate it. Just staring at myself. It's funny too. Are you done? Yeah, I'm waiting for you. Oh my shit. I'm sorry. It's alright. Um, I've been fucking and tweaking and playing. I mean, I'm not putting on like a ton of face today. It's old lady. Hi! My name's Alaska. What's yours? 
Hi, I'm from Alaska. Where are you? I wonder if you went to Alaska, if the, being native, would you would get Alaskan native rights? Probably not. Because each tribe has their own, um, their own, um... But you're all Native American. Yeah, but they have their own thing, and then... So not only to get benefits, you have to be in Oklahoma? No, just, they have their own... I don't know the word. Like, living in Florida, did... At the casino out here, do you have any... Could you do anything there? I can't remember what it's called, where it's... Uh, in Seminole? Yeah, Seminole. Oh, in Hollywood? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I worked at the I worked at the casino when I first got here. But were they like, oh, you're native or whatever? Um, the Seminoles aren't very friendly here. At all. They really care about themselves. Well, so even though you were native, they were like peace. Uh huh. I mean, I worked for them, and they made a complaint because I had on I had a mohawk hair at the time, and they came to my window. While I was working, and one of the Seminole people came, uh, one of the customers. He was Seminole, and he had on gold chains. He had one of his uh, traditional shirts on, or whatever. He was gambling, and he's like, "I need to speak to your manager." I said, "Okay, one second, not a problem." So I went to get the manager, and I stepped away. And I was like, what do you want? Oh, he complained about your hair. And I was like, what? He's like, oh, he said he was making fun of his tribe. And I was uh. like, how? And he's like, oh, because you're not Native American. And I was like, yes, I am. He's like, yeah, I know, told him. Oh. I was like, yeah, I know, I am Native American. So you got rid of for it? No, because oh. he, the, the manager knew that I was Native American. So oh. just... It's just he didn't, uh, so, you know, he just thought that it was, I guess, some punk little kid that was, but even still, you know, who cares? Mm -hmm. It's a hairstyle. It's hair. You're not being made fun of. Yeah, how I do my hair has nothing to do with you. Yeah. By the way. Sorry. I got lipstick all over my arm. So, when did you leave the casino? Uh, I didn't even know you worked there. Three, 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 four, three years ago, three, four years ago. What did you do for them? I was a cashier, and a vault cashier, and I was a, I was a vault cashier, and then I was a... And the uh, gambling part? Yeah. I was a vault cashier, and then I was a, uh, a regular cashier, and then I became a chip vault cashier, and then I was a tender cashier. Why did you leave? And then I became a jackpot cashier. My variances ended up having me leave the company. You mean your door was short? Yeah. They said, not today, Mr. Blankenship. So, by the way, have a nice day. You've been dismissed. What the best of the best. Mm -hmm. Bitch, please. I liked it. It was fun. And it was fun at the casino. I worked overnight. Yeah. I lost a bunch of weight. Why? Just because I worked overnight and I didn't... I walked a lot. At the casino? Or you walked a lot to get to work? Or? I walked a lot to get to work and then plus I was at the casino, so I didn't... Oh. I had to walk around a lot. All right, so at this part in the game, mm -hmm. we are going to pick out, you are going to pick out an Ask Misty, and we're going to answer it together. Okay. So pick out something that means something to you or that you can relate to or that you can have an educated answer and, you know, have a good response. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey guys, it's Misty Eyes and Ayana Chanel. And she picked out an Ask Misty for you. 
Hey, Misty, I'm currently a student in college trying to pay for both drag and school, and it's expensive. I find myself questioning how committed I am to school because I spend so much time trying to better my drag, and both are such a financial commitment, but I want both. Is there a way to do both? All right, Iona, you picked this question. There is a way to do both, but there is a question that you need to ask yourself. Which one are you willing to put more time into? Which one are you more willing to um, give a hundred percent? You have to give a hundred percent. You have to, to give a hundred percent to one of them. Um, is is if drag is your true calling? If it's really something that you want, then I say, you know, I don't say give up school because I'm going to school personally and I'm managing doing drag and school. Um, it is hard, um, but it is manageable. Um, I would suggest... Um, she cancels bookings all the time because of yeah. school. She's like, Missy, I can't come to Sunday <laughs> because... So she chose school as her priority. Yeah, but you got to look at it like... Is drag going to be your career whenever you get older? Is drag going to pay your bills when you get older? Are you going to be doing this when you're 40, 50 years old? Are you going to retire off a of drag? That's what you gotta look at. That's the ultimate question you got to ask yourself. Because honestly, I love drag and I enjoy it, but it's not going to be my standpoint. That's not going to set me and get me in life where I want to go. Um, unless I get on RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah or become famous somehow. And that's my view on it. So it's up to you. And I suggest um, asking yourself that question and really think about it. But I do not suggest quitting school over drag. That's not a wise choice. Um, drag is fun. Drag is amazing. Um, it's a good time to be yourself and express yourself and um, have fun with it. And school's fun. Um, it sucks, but it's worth it and it will give you a career. So stay Stay true to it and um, It's hard and you can do it. I'm doing it. So I know you can do it And she's a loser <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding And she just said it like I if I could do it. I know you could do it Hold on. I just put that on wrong and You can you can buy most of your costumes from stores and just embellish them. You know, you don't have to you know, order your costumes from girls online and, and you know, get, buy these expensive things. You can, you can make your own costumes. That, that's, a, that's a cheap way. Um, you know, I mean, what's your, what's your view on it? Oh, I actually kind of agree with Iona. Um, Dear Misty, I am currently a student trying to pay for both drag and school, and it's expensive. I find myself questioning how committed I am to school because I spend so much time trying to better myself in drag. Um, that sentence really concerns me because it sounds like you're committed more to drag than you are to school. I've gotten a lot of questions from young girls, or guys, drag queen girls, um, that are 15, 16, and they want to do drag. And I'm like, oh my God, honey, stop focusing on drag right now. Focus on college, focus yeah. on get a degree, get a future. And a lot of times people get very frustrated with me. And not too long ago, I had an ask Missy, who's like, oh my God, Missy, I hate when you say this. But it's true. Knowledge is power. Unless you're on RuPaul's Drag Race, drag is probably not going to pay your bills. Mm -mm. It's not going to get you a car. It's not going to get you a house. It's not going to get, I mean, unless you have a rich husband, then you could, you know, mm -hmm. be a trophy wife and do drag all you want and do all these pageants. Other than that, it's going to be really hard to make a living doing drag. It's just not, it's not a reality. But unless you're you're famous, you're not going to get a, a outstanding booking fee. It's not going to pay your bills. Um, unless you have a show seven days a week and you have, and you're, you're, you're a, you're a show manager and you have a booking fee of a hundred dollars or more, or maybe $200. So your paychecks are looking like, you know, what, almost a thousand a week, then then yeah, I say that that'd be fine, but reality they're not. 
People are like, oh my god, you're a drag queen. That's amazing. You must make a lot of money. No, no. you don't. <laughs> you put it... It costs more to do drag than... You, you put make... it back into your makeup. And your wigs and your costumes. You put it back into your makeup, your wigs. And your rhinestones. <laughs> Unless you get to wear that wig and that costume many times, it's not even paid for. You have to... You, it costs more money to do drag than it does than you make it doing drag. And I, I'm concerned that your priorities are true a little bit um, I definitely think right now you need to focus 100% on school yeah. yes do drag yes get a costume here and there yes do a booking here and there yes perfect your lip sync yes perfect your makeup yes perfect your hair abilities but you need A's in school that's the most important thing where is your future that's more important don't you want to live a happy comfortable life and that's really something I think that you should consider yeah, when you're young, you have all these dreams and hopes for yourself. But the reality is, drag is not easy. A lot of girls try to do drag, try to make it in drag, and they just don't even make it. And if you do make it, you're still not going to be making hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Unless you're on TV. And that's 12, 13 girls a year, mm -hmm. and thousands apply. Was that you? Yes, oh. That's 12, 13 girls a year, and thousands apply for that show. So the odds are also not in your favor. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My answer is, number one, focus on school. Yes, do drag as a hobby, but don't do drag as a main focus. You can't. Focus on your education. Knowledge is power. Get a degree. Mm -hmm. Get a career. Do drag for fun. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yep. I'll put a link here to another video where someone asks, why do you always tell people to go to college? And I probably did that a little more fluently than I am doing right now with my sister Iona Chanel but, trailer. Like she said, there's been plenty of times whenever I've been booked at her shows and I've canceled many times on her and she's been mad at me. But I mean, honestly, my education is more important. And I, I don't mean it in a bad way. No, me, it's, but my education is more important than me getting an F on my paper. Yeah. And me falling out of my At my the beginning box. of this video, we actually were talking about the things we learned in college. Yeah. And you made a commitment at your school to show up on time yeah. and get your papers done and do your case studies mm -hmm. and your research and whatever. That's important. You have to do that. Don't don't get distracted. I know that drag is fun and it's f exciting, but college needs to be our priority. At the end of the day, get your degree. Get magna cum laude if that is something that you're capable of doing. And then become the fiercest drag queen you can. And you know what? If you love drag, then I suggest get a, get a degree in musical fashion theater, design. fashion design, something. Where you're in theater, you're, you're dancing, you're singing, you're yeah. around people in that genre of... Uh, what's the word? I'm looking Performance for? art. Performance arts. Yeah, something in that area. Yeah. Um, and once you have that degree and you can still, you know, work with around the area and you can still do what you love and but ultimately focus on your education. Don't give up on that. Absolutely. Um, that is the number one thing. And yeah. And you say here and both are such financial commitments, but I want both. Is there a way you could do both? Yes, absolutely. You can do both if you focus 100% on school and do drag in your part-time. Save up, be creative, make an outfit over a week or two or three weeks or a month and do like special appearances every now and then. Don't commit yourself to a weekly show or an event that's going to strain you and distract you from school. Mm -hmm. Get your schoolwork done and appear once a month in a local cabaret. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Anyways, that was Misty Eyes and... Ayanna Chanel. Loving you is easy. Bye. Yeah. All right. Why don't? How much do you have left to do? I just gotta do uh, lashes and then my eyeliner and then my lips. I'm done. We'll keep getting. I'm gonna um, put on my body since yours is already on. Girl, I'm waiting for Sean, boy. Was Sean to come in yet? No, Sean ain't coming. Hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl, you don't look old. <laughs> I'm gonna be the oldest one tonight. <laughs> We're not doing old makeup for the first show. Oh, it's a Johnson. Now you tell me that you fall out in love. Well, I never ever thought that would be. This time, gotta take it easy, you throw it. Yeah.
Come on. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Jerry. I can talk Chinese all night. Yeah. How close are you being ready? Huh? How close are you being ready? I'm doing my lashes right now. Alright, I'm gonna go put stuff on the flash drive. Okay. You better ball, you better ball, you don't want to do the you better ball. I'm surprised we probably didn't capitalize on it. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Alright, get your hair on and just top on and we'll do the intro outro. I knew we'd run we'd run late. Sorry. It's not all your fault. There are many factors in being late today. But that's why I always start early on purpose. So we're not fucked. Girl, I turn the camera all the way to the left and you're still not on it. Better. Like, I'm not on it, but... Maybe it's the chair. There, maybe the other there was. I'm trying not to talk to you, so you can go faster. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I love liquid lipstick. It's like the best thing I've ever done. Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the rest of that train yeah. We're good. We're good. Wow. <laughs> that was chaotic at the end. I am so sorry for that. But um, tell my fans how to stalk you. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, Ayana uh, Chanel. It's I I Y A N A C H A N E L L. Um, and then Instagram is spelt the same way, um, but also F L at the end. Which so, is funny because she's moving from Florida. Yeah, so I'll end up changing it probably. But, you can't change your Instagram. Oh, you can't change it? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so I guess I'll stay. Oh, maybe you can change Florida. your. Maybe you can change your Instagram. You can't change your Snapchat. Snapchat, yes, you can't change your Snapchat. One of my friends' that his Snapchat is I love Chris, <laughs> and I'm like, who the fuck is Chris? He was like, uh, don't ask. <laughs> don't. I'm like, well, change it. He's like, it's impossible. You can't. Impossible. So, um, impossible. you can lose your followers and get a new Snapchat, or you can love Chris for the rest of your life. But anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to check out Miss Iona and follow yes. her as she does her reintroduction to her old life yes, as can't a wait. new creature feature. Can't wait. Good times. Loving you, CC. Bye. Hey, do you like these glasses? Zion Von for Timberg. You want it to wave?
everyone. Grandma wants to say hi to the kids. There's my backseat, bitches. Hey. That these glasses are old lady though. I think they make me look young and trendy. I mean, I'm not. I don't have wrinkles on yet, but what do you guys think? We're getting ready for the Golden Girls part of our show. <laughs> it's National Grandparents Day. I'm in my old lady makeup already. <laughs> No, because the, you the sure steak you don't is. Want, you sure you don't want brown gravy out of the corn? <laughs> no. Oh no, it's not gonna touch. Okay. I please have the mozzarella sticks that I ordered already. They should be coming up. All right. And then I also have uh, sirloin steak, medium well, and the sides. I would like. It's mean to me, but it's my old friend's day. What? Oh, old Chinese corn that goes in. Grandparents' day. <laughs>